Welcome to part 11 of topic 5. In part 11 we will finish our discussion of the row vibrational spectra of polyatomic molecules by considering symmetric top molecules. In part 10 we discuss the row vibrational spectra of linear molecules. What about symmetric top molecules? Well this is the row vibrational energy. I've got my vibrational energy term and my rotational energy term. For a symmetric top, remember, my rotational energy term depends on both J and K, and this was because we can have a difference between the rotational constants A and B. Remember, this is what it looked like. J can be equal to 0, 1, 2, etc., and K can be equal to 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, all the way up to plus or minus J. This is my methyl iodide molecule. In the symmetric stretch here, all the bonds are stretching. I would classify this as a parallel band because the dipole moment is changing along the principal axis, along the direction of the carbon iodine bond. So for the parallel band, the selection rules again are delta V is equal to plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 2 etc. and delta J for a symmetric top molecule is not only plus or minus 1 but it can also be 0 as well. This means we will see a PQR band structure. But furthermore delta K is equal to 0. However, you can imagine that a perpendicular vibration for the metal iodide might look something like this. For a perpendicular band for a nonlinear molecule delta V is equal to plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 2 etc and delta J is equal to 0 or plus or minus 1. But this time delta K is not equal to 0 it is only equal to plus or minus 1. Now this is going to lead to a significant difference in the band structure. Remember when delta K was equal to 0 we could ignore the A minus B term when we are looking at differences in energy between two energy levels because they will cancel. But now we can't, so this leads to a difference in the spectra. For the parallel band, because delta J is equal to 0 and plus or minus 1, we get P, Q and R branches. For the perpendicular band, because delta J is equal to 0 and plus or minus 1, we also get P, Q and R branches. So for methyl iodide, this is what the parallel band looks like. It is a very heavy molecule, so the rotational constant will be very small, and so the rotational structure will be very close together. So we get overlapping lines, but we are still able to resolve the fine structure. It is not, however, as resolved as the CO2 spectrum we had. But this is still a classic PQR band profile. This is the perpendicular band for methyl iodide. This time we have this kind of unresolved structure at the bottom. And then we've got these intense peaks on top of that. What's going on? Well, because delta K can be equal to plus or minus 1, it means that for every initial J level, there are lots of K levels we can move between. What this means is that the PQR branches are no longer on top of each other as they were for the parallel bands. This time, because K is changing, the PQR branches are now displaced from one another. So we're still going to get PQR branches, but they are all going to be displaced from one another. So we are going to see lots of PQR branches. So this is what we are seeing here. The PNR branches are the unresolved structure at the bottom, shown here in green. The intense lines on top are individual Q branches. The distance between the Q branches is related to the difference between the A and B rotational constants. So for perpendicular bands and symmetric tops, delta V is equal to plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 2 etc. For the R branch, 
delta j is equal to plus 1 and delta k is equal to plus or minus 1. This is where the issue comes from. Before we could ignore this. For the q branch, delta j is equal to 0 and delta k is also equal to plus or minus 1. And again for the p branch, delta j is equal to minus 1 and delta k is equal to plus or minus 1. For every value of j, we've got many allowed values of k. And so we've got lots of p, q and r branches. It can be quite difficult identifying parallel and perpendicular bands in infrared spectroscopy. However, group theory helps us to differentiate between the two. Remember that parallel bands are those in which there is a change in the dipole moment parallel to the principal axis. Here we can see the dipole moment changing parallel to the principal axis, both in the symmetric stretch and in the bending vibration. Note that both of these vibrations have A1 symmetry. Whereas in the perpendicular band, there is a component of the dipole moment changing perpendicular to the principal axis. This can be seen in the asymmetric stretch, which has B2 symmetry. It is easy to determine whether a band is parallel or perpendicular simply by using group theory. If the vibration transforms like Z, it is a parallel band, that is, vibrations with A1 symmetry. And if the vibration transforms like X or Y, it is a perpendicular band, that is, vibrations with B1 or B2 symmetry. Here are the infrared bands of nitrous oxide. There are three bands, and the first has a PQR band structure. The question is, can we work out the structure of nitrous oxide and assign the bands to particular types of vibration? We will assume that we know that nitrous oxide has the formula N2O. However, this could mean that nitrous oxide is NNO or NON. We also have to determine whether it is linear or bent. Well, first of all, can we work out whether it is linear or nonlinear? The first thing we notice is that there are PR band profiles. If nitrous oxide was bent, all band profiles would be PQR. This means that nitrous oxide is a linear molecule. Now that we know that the molecule is linear, we also know that the first band at 589 wave numbers is a degenerate bending mode. This is because it has a PQR band profile. The only bands that exhibit a PQR band structure in linear molecules are perpendicular bands, and for a triatomic this has to be the degenerate bending mode. Another thing to note about the bending mode is that the band is not as strong as the others. It is generally the case that bending vibrations give bands which are not as strong as stretching vibrations. This can be rationalised because stretching vibrations generally exhibit a greater change in dipole moment during the vibration. Next, we need to decide whether the molecule is NNO or NON. Well, there are three bands that are infrared active. If the molecule was centrosymmetric, that is, had the structure NON, then its symmetric stretch would be infrared inactive, and only two bands would be active. As there are three bands, nitrous oxide must have the structure NNO. What about assigning the bands to symmetric and asymmetric stretches? Well, as a general rule, asymmetric stretches occur at higher frequencies than symmetric stretches, and so the band at 1,285 wave numbers is a symmetric stretch, and the band at 2,224 wave numbers is the asymmetric stretch. This is the end of this week's online lecture. Thank you for listening.